You're listening to the Mother to Baby Podcast, medications and more during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Ask the experts with your host, genetic counselor and mama four, Chris Stallman. This episode contains evidence-based information that's current as of the day recorded and may change as more data becomes available. To get the very latest information about this topic or other topics in pregnancy and breastfeeding, please contact a mother-to-baby specialist at 866-626-6847, by text at 855-999-3525, or through our website at mothertobaby.org. Welcome to another episode of the Mother to Baby podcast. My name is Chris Stallman, and I am a genetic counselor, a mother of four, and a teratogen information specialist. So what I do is I talk to people, patients, providers, family members, about exposures before and during pregnancy, during breastfeeding, and in cases of adoption. And an exposure can be anything. So it could be cosmetics, it could be a virus or a medication. And today we have a very special guest to talk to us about exposures in breastfeeding. Philip O. Anderson is an affiliate clinical professor of pharmacy at the UC San Diego Skag School of Pharmacy. Dr. Anderson has lectured and published extensively on drug use during breastfeeding, including in professional journals and textbooks. Dr. Anderson also founded the LactMed database, which is a national library of medicine database that provides information on exposures during breastfeeding. Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thanks for inviting me. Happy to. So we are going to jump right in um, and get started. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about the LACMED database and the LACTRX app? Sure. Um, LACMED is a database of uh, information on drug use during breastfeeding. Uh, The problem with this information is that it's scattered all over the place and there's it wasn't a place in the past where one could look up uh, by drug to find out what information there is on breastfeeding. So LACMED was created to bring all of this information into one place so that it was uh, easier to find. The National Library of Medicine uh, sponsors LACMED and um, it went live on April 10th, 2006. Then after a few years, uh, I don't remember the exact date, the the National Library of Medicine created an app for the uh, Android and iPhone, and it was very popular. But a new uh, group of administrators came into the National Library of Medicine and discontinued it. And I know that many people are still using that old app, which is now out of date. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Mother to Baby decided that they would sponsor a new app, and uh, that's what LactRx is. And it's uh, available both in Apple and Android uh, stores at this point. So it's currently available for use? Yes, it is. Excellent. And I'm so glad um, that you gave us a little bit of that history. So as a genetic counselor and part of Mother to Baby, I give some lectures to medical students, pharmacists, you know, emergency department residents and so on. And I will say that the question I get every single time is, where is the LACMED app and is it going to come back? Because as you said, you know, it wasn't updated. So this is very good news that we'll be passing on to all of our colleagues. I'm very pleased also that we have an app now because I know it's very popular and I'm, I was really concerned that people were using an outdated app. Absolutely, because it's so much easier to use the app um, than it is to have to sit down you know, at a computer or to go through your browser. So yeah, very excited to have that back. And I have to say for myself as a busy working professional who's also a mom and have been you know, for decades now, 
it's so much more convenient for me to be able to just use an app on my phone that has good information that is regularly updated. So it's literally at my fingertips. If I was concerned about something in breastfeeding, then I could just go to my app, look it up and know that I'm getting reliable and up to date information. And Dr. Anderson, how did you get started in this particular line of work? How did you get started with LACMED and why is this important to you? Well, I was a pharmacist on the floor that uh, had the newborn nursery way back. And um, the, one of the physicians who was interested in breastfeeding would come to the satellite pharmacy and ask me questions about whether this drug or that drug was safe to give during nursing. And um, since there wasn't really any great sources, I started digging into it and collecting information about this. And then it sort of turned into um, some review articles and then eventually into the LACMED database. And you've stuck with this for quite a long time. And thank you for that. Absolutely something that we need to have and an excellent resource. Why is this important to you to continue this work? Well, I think it's um, something that, um, I've, well, as you said, I've been doing for a long time, and I think I've finally gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> so I enjoy doing this and um, have a lot of, I'm always getting asked to give speeches and talks about things, so I try to keep up to date so that the talks are uh, relevant. And um, my wife is an expert in in breastfeeding, she's a pediatrician, so we have something to talk about <laughs> rather other than the usual things. So that is very cool. So I'm going to ask you the question that I get most often that I'm still surprised that people ask: If a person who is breastfeeding receives a contrast agent for a procedure like a CT scan, when can they start breastfeeding again? Well, there are two kinds of contrast agents. There are the ones for um, x-rays and CT scans, and those are iodine compounds and mostly. And there are also um, MRI contrast agents, and those are gadolinium mostly. The answer is similar for both. You really don't have to stop breastfeeding at all for either one because the amounts are very low in milk. Now, the Radiologic Society guidelines do say that if the mother is really concerned about it, she can um, withhold breastfeeding for 24 hours, but there's really no reason to do that. So um, I know that many times mothers are told to stop breastfeeding for some period of time, but it's not really absolutely necessary. And that's, that's how we counsel people as well. And it's good to have, you know, that information, because as you say, people are, of course, very concerned, rightly so, and, and being able to continue to breastfeed, usually as soon as they're able to, is a relief to a lot of the people that we talk to. Dr. Anderson, before I let you go, is there a message or a takeaway that you would like to leave our audience with? Yes, I would say that uh, if a mother is, is nursing and she has to take a medication, there's a very high likelihood that she won't have to stop breastfeeding. And uh, this is unfortunately advice that's given many times to, to mothers that, that they have to stop if they're getting a certain drug. And I think with the information that's available in LACMED, they should be able to um, be confident that it's not a problem. And in most cases, there are a few exceptions, but they are fairly rare. And um, we don't want to have mothers stop breastfeeding just because of a medication that's not going to hurt the baby. I couldn't agree more. And of course, you know, we get these calls and inquiries all the time. And there's a lot of people who are so motivated to continue breastfeeding. And it's really good to know that we can give them some information that hopefully can help them feel good about feeding their baby the way that they want to. Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for being with us today. Please, um, you and your team, keep up the good work. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.
And that's going to end this episode of the Mother to Baby podcast. As always, thank you for being part of our audience. Don't forget that you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or however you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe so that way you never miss a new episode. And you can also go back and listen to some of our older episodes as well. And Mother to Baby is here to answer your questions. So about exposures in breastfeeding, pregnancy, before pregnancy, or in cases of adoption. You can reach us by phone at 866-626-6847. For text messaging, it's 855-999-3525. You can visit our website at mothertobaby.org, where you can live chat with us. You can also access our podcast there, along with our many, many fact sheets and other information about exposures. And if you want to be on our podcast or have an idea for a future podcast, feel free to email us. Our email address is contact us at mothertobaby.org. In the meantime, thank you again for stopping by. And remember, Mother to Baby is here for you. Take care. Mother to Baby is a service of the nonprofit organization of Teratology Information Specialists and supported by the Health Resources and Service Administration of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's made possible through generous donations from listeners like you. To learn more about Mother to Baby, please visit mothertobaby.org.